Hi, I'm Grace. This is Vintage Hi. Film Channel. There's John and there's Art, Hello. my friends uh, from Celebrating Act Two, who are joining today. We're going to talk about the Tab Hunter show. One of the key things was that I had all these wonderful guest stars uh, who were all supporting one another. Uh, Jack Alperson, Norman Fellows are the one that we saw. Right. right. Uh, so I actually enjoyed watching this one uh, from beginning to end. <laughs> actually. I, well, some of them I don't. The Tab Hunter Show. Starring Tab Hunter. With Richard Erdman and Jerome Cowan. So these two guys, these uh, character actors, I've, I've got some um, some uh, still images of them that I can yeah. I can show. They're they're both very funny guys mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. in a lot of films and TV you know, shows. So Grace, um, one of the things that all the networks did uh, when they took a star from the movies, which is what Tar Tab Hunter was, and built a TV show around them, they created a character. In this case, Tab Hunter is a uh, a cartoonist. And they always surrounded them with actors, with top-notch character actors. Every, I mm -hmm. guarantee you, every old TV show. In fact, they still do it today. This is this show is a typical uh, find a find a star and make a show around them. And I, I quite frankly, yeah. as a, yeah. a an old TV guy, I love this stuff. By, by the way, John, John, to go back, <laughs> not only did they uh, load them up with character actors, but also ingenues. Uh, uh, and, um, and and people who are up and coming. For instance, uh, I just pulled up uh, an episode list. Episode two, they had Elizabeth Montgomery. Oh, in, and the Tab okay. Hunter show. Mm -hmm. uh, and episode one, Mary Tyler Moore. No kidding. As guest yeah. as guest stars. So wow, uh, they young have up, they, they young have... up and comers. And the whole premise of the Tab yeah. Hunter show was built on the fact that he his image. His Hollywood image was a hunk, was a pretty boy, and um, sure, I don't remember what his real name was, but somebody named him Tab Hunter to be in the movies, and yeah. um, they were searching for uh, more pretty boys, younger, next generation, uh, handsome actors, and of course, this guy was gorgeous. He actually, one of the things I love about Tab Hunter was he was a damn good actor. Even though he got a bad think, rap in the he beginning was? for being, you know, just a pretty face. By the now, way, Tab Hunter was born Arthur Andrew Kelm, K-E-L-M. He listen. He had a long career. Um, he, he he was able to transition out of his starring years when he was the hunky young pretty boy. He was able to transition into some character roles later. Um, I thought he had a nice career. Yeah, this is the Maltese oh. Falcon. <laughs> so Jerome Cowan was in the Tab Hunter show. This, right. He was a regular. Yeah, and that's why yeah. you, you that's found why an old we're showing this. Clip of, this guy, uh, Jerome Cowan. Sam, yeah. uh, Sam yeah. Spade's partner was played by Jerome Cowan. Stick with Tab Hunter. This is the other supporting character who's a regular in the Tab Hunter show. What's this guy's name? Richard, Richard Erdman. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's been in a lot of, well, a lot of stuff, Well, for me, too. like all the character um, actors, I don't know their names. I know their faces. Oh, him again. Well, you know. Part of the reason uh, this series didn't go on, I, I have a couple of reasons, I think, um, that it didn't last farther than a season was, um, uh, although the acting was, was good, I felt like there was not a lot of chemistry between tab hunter and the and the actresses that you know were the objects yeah. of his affection uh that was one thing and the other thing is the 1960 television season it was a tough season there were there wow, were my three sons new shows my three sons let me keep moving here the andy um, griffith andy show? griffith that's tough competition flintstones and these are just the new yeah. shows you know the the existing shows were uh uh, wow. Route 66, Jack Benny, Surfside the 6. Jack Benny program. Didn't, I, didn't, um, I, didn't I read someplace that he was on Sunday night against Ed Sullivan? It was a tough outside. season, and, and this show, was it was fine. It was a good show, but it just wasn't the best show that came out that year against all the other ones that survived from yeah. previous yeah. seasons. So 
the premise of the show was that he was a cartoonist, he was a single guy, and of course he's a hunk, and women would throw themselves at him, and he had he had girlfriends coming and going, and he always his cartoons were always beautiful women, and he quote drew them right. from life, right? <clears throat> so he'd have a beautiful girl come in, right? A lot of kissing and cocktails, and then he'd draw the cartoon, and the the you know the premise was kind of weak because he didn't yeah, ever yeah. have a real romance and his cart the two supporting guys were the uh, were the publishers of his cartoons and there was always some kind of business right. gimmick that was going you have to right. have a problem in a show right and the problems were not really very good um and now here's one I've obviously that I haven't seen he gets thrown in jail for something so the, the, you know they the shows were reasonably well written uh, they're entertaining to watch. I've only seen one of them, and I'm looking forward to seeing this one. And the acting wasn't bad, but it was a thin premise, I think. I think it's time okay. to wrap this up. You can find John and Art at Celebrating Act 2. That's their YouTube channel. And the website is CelebratingAct2.com. And this is Vintage Film Channel and uh, VintageFilmChannel.com. And uh, we really appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Lovely girl, Lori. Would you like to meet her? <laughs> so would I. As a matter of fact, she doesn't exist. Really? She doesn't? All right, where is she? Pete, I told you. Purely a product of my imagination. Paul, you may have a certain bumbling charm, but you cannot imagine your way in out of the rain. Oh, that's all in the past. Without your social life, your strip would be a large, blank space in the morning paper. That's all been changed. Sure it has. You imagined Lila, Ginny, Hillary, Penelope, Stephanie, Barbara. You know I didn't. All right. Where's Lori? Pete, I've been emancipated. No more dependence on those bittersweet experiences. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Nevertheless, <laughs> come in. Paul? John. Hello, Pete. John? Paul, I just dropped by with a small billet doux. Anything important? Uh, not really. You know that new character of yours, Paul, Laurie McBain, the one you made up? Sure, we were just talking about her. I want to congratulate you on your imagination. This is from her. But that's impossible. I did imagine her. Oh, yes? She's suing both of us for one million dollars invasion of privacy. Let me see you imagine your way out of that one. I knew you were holding out on me. Get out of my hair, will you? Do you realize what this may cost me? Do you realize what this may cost me? When do I meet her? When do I meet her? When do you meet her? Right now. <laughs> Starring Tab Hunter with Richard Erdman and Jerome Cowan. Consider it a personal favor if you'll let me turn you over to... Just joined the firm today. Oh, you must be very proud, Mr. Brother. You don't know. I've dreamed of this day for 24 years. Entered Michael in Harvard Law School the day I found my wife was expecting. And it worked out. Not quite as I expected. Michael? <laughs> this is Mr. Paul Morgan. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I'll leave you with Michael. And now your case is uh, McBain versus Morgan Larson et al. Am I correct? You are correct in every tiny detail. <laughs> uh, yes. Won't you please sit down, Mr. Morgan? Paul.
Mr. Morgan. What was it? Oh, nothing. Oh. Well, now, Mr. Morgan. Paul. Mr. Morgan, uh, my research shows that in cases of this type, McMillan versus Perlson, Nibbett versus Cox, the plaintiff is usually motivated by a desire for notoriety or wish to meet in person the celebrity against whom he or she is filed suit. Do you follow me? Right behind you. <laughs> uh, now, ordinarily, I would suggest that you and I drive to uh, Wildcat Flat and, and meet this Miss McBain here and get a settlement from her. When do we leave? Uh, well, first, I must ask a rather personal question. Good. Do you find me attractive? Definitely. Well, then I'm afraid I cannot take your case. You just lost me. Sit down, Mr. Morgan. I'll try to explain. Oh, well. Uh, did you disappoint your father on the day you were born? You know, I can't honestly remember. <laughs> well, I did, Mr. Morgan, and I'm determined not to disappoint him on my first case. So I will wait for a case in which there's less danger that I might be diverted emotionally, you see? I understand completely. You do? Uh, sit down, Miss Carruthers. I'm uh, quite relieved at your attitude. You are? Yes. As a matter of fact, when I first saw you, I thought it quite impossible to have you represent me. You did? Well, I flatter myself by thinking I'm as capable as the next fellow. I'm sure you are, if. If what? If we can find our relationship purely to McBain versus Morgan. Do I have your promise on that? Well, yes, but... Good, then I'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Paul? Uh, 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 Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Let's keep everything on a business basis. <laughs> Why are we stopping? Well, this is it. What? We're in the middle of nowhere. That's right. You're not going to tell me we ran out of gas. Much too corny. Now we've been getting along just fine on a lawyer-client relationship. All work and no play. We could talk about something else. Uh, what do you think of the national desk? Crazy about it. <laughs> Automation? There are some things that can never be replaced. I could get out and walk. And miss lunch? Lunch? Well, that's why we stopped. Chicken salad or ham and cheese? <laughs> Very strange. Isn't it? Uh, no. I mean, you've never been to this town before. Positive. But you've drawn it so perfectly in your strips. Coincidence. But this street, even the name of the saloon. Pure coincidence. Are you certain, are you absolutely certain that you're not holding anything back? Michael, I'm holding back so much it frightens me. <laughs> no, I mean about the case. My case is in your hands. But how will I explain to the Bar Association? They'll never know. Strangers in town. <laughs> what brings you to Wildcat Flat? <clears throat> well, we're here on business. On business? Fine. I used to be in business myself. <laughs> we're looking for Lori McBain. Lori McBain. We're looking for her. <laughs> Look in the glove compartment. <laughs> now, sir, I am Michael Carruthers. Uh, this gentleman is my client, Mr. Paul Morgan. I'm an attorney. She really is. Well, congratulations. Say, why don't you come inside and have a nice, cool drink? Oh, by the way, folks, my name's Hudgens. I tend a little bar around here, and I'm also the proprietor. We haven't had much business since about 1888, but I'm expecting another boom. In gold or silver? Oh, I'm not particularly. 
I'm also mayor of the town and sheriff and justice of the peace. Most folks call me judge or dead before they moved away. Now, you try that. Pure spring water. Oh, it's very good. Uh -huh. You were uh, no Laura McBain? Sure. It's my court you filed suit in. Against you, wasn't it? Why, yes. One million dollars. See, now, that is a little high. But, you know, I think if you and me got together, Counselor, we could settle for, uh, 500,000. <laughs> the suit was filed in your court, and you're acting as lawyer for the plaintiff? Why not? I'm her uncle. Well, that'll be two dollars for the water. Her uncle? Two dollars for water? Some folks like it real well. Don't you pay him a cent, Paul. I'm going to call my office and have them check up on you. The phone right back there. I've got a lock on it. It's a $10 service charge. <laughs> well, then I'll use another phone. Only one in town. Well, you'll unlock it for nothing. <laughs> I told you there was another boom coming. I can feel it. Guess who? Not... not Lori. Paul, you came. I shouldn't have had that spring water. You're not mad at me because I filed suit. Because really, Paul, it's the biggest thrill of my life to be in your strip. It's just about the only thrill of my life. But how? How did you get there? Well, you put me there. But how did I know about you? Well, why shouldn't you? I've been sending you fan letters in my picture ever since your strip started. Lori, I get fan letters from all over the country, and while I would like to read them, I... That's it. That must be it. What is? Well, I probably glanced at one of your letters sometime, and it registered on my subconscious. That's why I thought I invented you. Like a play by, by Tennessee Williams or one of those. And I was so proud of myself. You're disappointed in me? No, no, not a bit. I think uh, you're perfectly fine. You're making me very shy. What? Well, all those things we've been doing together in your strip. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Would you want to gather up some new material? Lori, there is the matter of the uh, suit. I'll drop it. And sign a release? I'd love to. Shall we seal the bargain? That's the least we can do. <laughs> oh! Michael, this is uh, Lori McBain. We just uh, settled the case. There's not one penny. Well, she doesn't want any money. We just sealed the bargain. What? The oldest shakedown racket in the world, and you fell for it. That's the Badger game. Who's she? Uh, my lawyer. Look, Michael, she's going to sign a release. You've just won your first case, please. You may be able to pull the wool over his eyes, but I'm here to protect my Michael. client. If I have to, Michael. all the way to the Supreme Court. Michael, it's just outside. Bye, Lori. Just a minute. What are you doing? No parking zone. That'll be $20. $20? Uh, that's a bit steep. But then we don't get a live one too often. You know. <laughs> I thought that Jesse James was dead. dead to court. But I'm used to it. Here. Just a moment. I'll take that. Look, let's pay the money and get out of here. We will not. This Judge Hudgens is what I think of you, your town, your niece. And your parking ticket. Hey! Now, what do you intend to do about that? Well, I guess I'll just have to put your client in jail. In jail? I dare you. Resisting arrest? Uh, no! Michael, let's pay the $20 and... Of course we're resisting, and I so stipulate. Well, I don't. Well, I guess you just have to come along with me, young fella. You're right ahead. This case won't stand up two minutes in a higher court. Higher court? I've got a job. I can't wait for a higher it's court. It's a let's... shame, but come on. Don't you worry, Paul. If need be, I'm prepared to dedicate my life to this case. Why couldn't her father have been a doctor? <laughs> The judge was fair. He gave me my constitutional right to one phone call for a $10 service charge. <laughs> Since I didn't see any point in calling my lawyer, I called Peter Fairfield to come up and post bail. Howdy, partner. Did you post bail? Judge will be right over. Paul, oh, why'd you do it? 
I didn't do anything. I came up here to settle this lawsuit about this girl that I invented. Only I, I didn't really invent her. And I'll forget it. It's too complicated. Your lawyer says you're a martyr in the cause of justice. I don't want to be a martyr. You met her, Michael. Adorable. She thinks you should refuse bail. Make your case much stronger. I don't want to make my case much stronger. I only want to get out of here. Paul, oh, what's happened to you? Haven't you any principles? All I want to do... Beat the woman's a mess. Not at all. She's a very high-minded, idealistic girl. Now, the cell isn't too bad. I hired her on the spot. You didn't? Well, you've got 14 lawyers already. But none that I can go dancing with. <laughs> you letting him out? No. I think he's letting you in. Me? <laughs> I didn't do anything. You hired the girl. What? <laughs> Mr. Fairfield. Mr. Fairfield, he gave you a parking ticket. <laughs> $20 or 20 days? I'll take the $20. <laughs> Never! <laughs> hey! Lock him up. Come on. Oh, now, wait a minute. Uh, I'll pay. I'm loaded. My client will fight this to the highest court in the land. What did I do wrong? You hired Michael. I'll bet she's a lousy dancer, too. <laughs> Stool. Why? <laughs> Goody, a jailbreak. No, no, we're in enough trouble already. I've got it all figured out. First, I help you break jail, and then I burn the record of your arrest. Good thinking. Lori, <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't hit him very hard, did you? You want me to hit him again? No, just open the door. He fell. We're reviving. What are you doing out of your cell? Exercise hour. I think it's only two. You were trying to escape. Don't you approve? Of course not. Then I'm for it. But you spoil everything. You're a perfect test case. I don't want to be a test case. I just want to get out of here. I can see that. Jailbreak, huh? It's, uh, it's not like it looks. Don't say anything that can be held against you. All we want to do is pay our parking ticket. Well, now, it's kind of late for that. Attempted jailbreak is two years. And assaulting a deputy, well, now, that's life imprisonment. Life? Life? Have courage. History will vindicate you. But we didn't even hit him. Suddenly fainted, eh? <laughs> sure. Come on, inside. Oh, we just came out of there. <laughs> Judge, Judge I, I demand to see my lawyer. Oh, certainly. Uh, Miss Carruthers. Yes. Forget it. <laughs> what are we going to do? Afraid that they abolish capital punishment. <laughs> Guilty. Stop it, will you? Stir crazy? We've only been here overnight. Not guilty? Paul, it's true, you are in jail. John. Mr. Carruthers, thank heaven. What are you doing in this cell? I'm waiting for someone to get me out. Me too. Paul, you're two days behind on the strip. What happened, Mr. Morgan? You came up here to settle a simple nuisance suit, and now you're charged with every crime in the book. Well, it all started out with a parking ticket. Parking ticket? Why, this Judge Hudgens says he has enough to send you up for life. Paul, 
If you are convicted, do you think you could draw the strip in here and send it in? Well, I... <laughs> now, wait a minute. What about me? You had nothing to do anyway. Oh, I resent that. <laughs> Quiet. Gentlemen, please. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Afternoon. Be with you in a minute. Let me do the talking. That's what your daughter said. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand the problem. Well, well. I see the old jail doing business again. First full house since 1905. Say, don't let your daughter take on any more clients. You only got one cell. <laughs> Judge, what are your plans for these men? Speedy trial and a fair sentence. Maybe uh, ten years. Ten years? Ten years? He's out of his mind. If I was as young as you, young fella, ten years wouldn't mean anything to me. How do you turn state's evidence? <laughs> <laughs> and what if we plead these men guilty, Judge? Well, now, I might let them off with a stiff fine. Of which you get a percentage. I believe so. Yes. <laughs> we'll pay. Paul may not be able to draw in jail at all. Right. Right. Nonsense. This is an out-and-out -out miscarriage of justice, and we plead innocent. What? Again? <laughs> Please pay the fine. He's even worse than his daughter. Carruthers. Innocent. Well, suit yourself. I'm agreeable either way. Well, I'm not. You will uh, send these men to the county seat jail after conviction? Well, of course. But you'll have to keep them here until we exhaust our appeal. That may take years. Years? <laughs> Gee, now, I can't board and feed them for years. That's the law, and I'll hold you to the letter of it. Come, Mr. Larkin. Hey, now, hold on. <laughs> Two fine young fellas locked up all that time. Maybe we could compromise on a fine of, say, $200. Not a cent. No. Well, wait, hey, how about 50 and Laurie will sign a release on the suit? Nothing. Come, Mr. Oh, wait a minute. All right, take the keys and do as you darn well please. <laughs> I'm afraid this is all my fault. I shouldn't have turned you over to my daughter. My hat. She'll be disappointed to see me a free man. I expected too much of her. So she tried to be Clarence Darrow on her first case. Well, I'll have to shatter her dreams. Let me talk to her then. Would you? I'd certainly appreciate it. Hey, what about me? Oh, of course. Sorry. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in my many years before the bar, I have encountered in the course of my duty score upon score of hardened criminals. Now I think I know the criminal face as well as any person here in these United States. The learned prosecutor will also tell you that the evidence against my client of cold, calculating, first-degree murder with premeditation is overwhelming. I agree, and I do so stipulate. Finally, the learned prosecutor will tell you how Paul Morgan, with his own hunting knife, stabbed to death his beautiful blonde fiancé, whom he hated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. The corpse was stabbed by a left-handed man. Paul Morgan, since the day of his birth, has been right-handed. Um, I'm ambidextrous. I was just <clears throat> frying out my voice. Very good. And you're holding my hand. I know. How'd you get out? Well, your father thought the case was so big, he came up here to help out. Oh. He's worried about my emotions getting the better part of my judgment. He needn't be. You're not going to let go of my hand? No. All emotions under control. Positively? No involvement. None? I'm merely an instrument of justice capable of looking past you to the larger struggle. What are you doing? Nothing personal. I'm just storing up memories for the long years in jail, all right? <laughs> in case I get the chair. <laughs> oh, Paul. I can't let you go to jail. I'm not even fit to practice. I'm not a lawyer, I'm a woman. Why can't you be both? You think I should try? Mm, I think so, yeah. I wonder if this is ethical. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. 
I hate to go home. I hate to take you home. Case to argue in the morning. You know, you're much too successful. <laughs> What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Paul, this is ridiculous. You were parked in your own driveway. Give me that. Oh, I'll pay. I don't want it. Oh, you will not. Would you take $2,000 in cash for your car and trade? <laughs> <laughs> That was a close one. <laughs>